This video explains how to use the Nanslow Remote AirTrack. When you first log on, you might have to scroll down a bit to see it, but there's a yellow button that says Voice Conference. Click it, and you will see information about how to join the voice conference for the system you're on. In this case, you can use your uh, computer, or you can dial in with your telephone. If you have any trouble joining the voice conference or need other assistance, you can email the lab techs at the email address on the screen. To take control of the interface, right-click and select Request Control of VI. Once you have control of the interface, you can uh, control the camera, for example, to look around the lab uh, and see um, all of the equipment. You can use presets on the camera controls to zoom in on particular parts of the equipment that are listed in a pop-up box. And you can switch cameras if there is more than one camera on the apparatus. The other cameras can give you a different perspective on the equipment depending on what you're trying to look at. For example, here we're taking a closer look at the electronic balance, which we can use to get the mass of the sled. And here's the sled sitting at the launcher end of the track. We can raise and lower that end of the track with this control by choosing how high or low we want to place it and clicking on Go to Position. Since the launcher was not turned on, the sled just slides down the track. However, we can bring it back to this end of the track by lowering the launcher end and turning on the electromagnet on the launcher by clicking this button. And then when we lower the track, we can see the sled come sliding back down the air track and connect up to the launcher, which is now energized so the magnet holds on to the sled. So this time when we raise the track, the sled stays attached to the launcher and we can release it by clicking click to launch sled. When we release it, it starts a timing cycle that collects data from the four photo gates that you can see on the screen. The data from those photo gates is going to go into trial one because that's what we have selected here. And we see on the data tab that trial one is now populated with times. Those four times represent the in and out time as the sled goes through each photo gate. Trial number two is currently empty. Trial number one has data that we just placed into it. So if we increase the trial number to trial number two on the data collection screen, we can go through the same process again. And this time, the data will populate trial number two. You can collect as many trials as you wish. In an alternative configuration, there can be a rubber band launcher mounted on the system that will push the sled even when the track is level. So it just depends on what your lab procedure has you accomplish. So launching the sled one more time, we can see that after a few seconds, the data populate the table for trial number two without overwriting trial number one. You can export these data, as many as you have collected, to the clipboard on your computer and then paste it into a spreadsheet for later analysis. If you export the trial data, make sure you paste it into a spreadsheet. Otherwise, you won't have access to it later. If you need to take the mass of the sled for your particular experiment, you can get it from this dial indicator. But first, you have to have the lab technicians place the sled onto the electronic balance. We'll zoom in on the balance so that we can see 
what this looks like. And what we notice right away is that I've forgotten to turn on the balance. So I'll go do that and I'll place the sled on it for you. And then you'll be able to see that the mass of the sled will appear on the control panel and that you can also zoom in with the camera and take a look at the mass on the electronic balance itself. 